Everybody, sorry to interrupt the show. I have a huge, huge, huge announcement, all right? We are doing a farm festival. I'm sorry, we are doing a farm music festival. Yes, October 14th from 2 to 10. We're having five bands play. Chancey Williams is the is the main the main show, the main band. Uh, there's four others, they're local. But we are opening up the whole arena, the whole field next to it for parking, the pasture next to it. It's a kid zone, food trucks, bars. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so go to the website, www.balesay.com, for more information to buy tickets. You can buy tickets online. Uh, bring the print out the receipt. Bring it with you. Uh, and we're excited to see you. October, plan ahead. I'm not stressed yet, but I'm going to be stressed. All right, back to the show. We're making hay. Welcome to Bale's Hay. This is Bale's Hay. This is Bale's Hay. YouTube. YouTube. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget. Don't forget. To hit the thumbs up. Thumbs up. And share. And share. Thank you our, to our sponsors. Thank you for our toy sponsors. PDI. PDI. Forney. Forney. And fluid all. And fluid all. Today we're gonna see a combine. Today we're gonna see a combine. And we're gonna see a tractor. And we're gonna see a tractor. Planting. A yellow, a yellow tractor, yeah. A yellow tractor. Planting Sudan. Yeah, planting Sudan. Grass. Grass. Guys, welcome to the YouTube channel again. Uh, they're still combining seed. I have Henry with me. He loves riding in combines since that's not something we do very often. So we're going to ride with him. Uh, Chewy's out planting Sudan grass. We follow up the seed alfalfa with Sudan grass. We'll let it grow up. This year we most likely won't bale any of it up. We've got so much extra feed uh, and it's so cheap we'll then be competing with ourselves. If I make, if I make cheap cheap hay to sell, cheap sedan grass, it will then compete with the cheap alfalfa. And I really don't want to, oh, bless you. I really don't want to compete with my own products. So I think we're just going to disc this in. And we strictly do that for soil conservation, putting, putting something else in the soil. It's the closest thing to a rotation as we can do. Uh, the cotton market's not good. Corn uh, doesn't really pay when you custom grow for a dairy or someone else dairies are having a hard time at the moment so we'll do the a lot of times we'll do the rye grass but this time we're just gonna go straight from seed alfalfa to Sudan uh, grow it up probably six seven foot tall probably seven foot tall and we'll just disc it right in and we'll get to use the new disc oh so yesterday well no a couple days ago made a deal I uh, explained this on the last video we bought our new backhoe I was able to buy another backhoe extremely cheap, and it's a pretty decent backhoe, which meant well yesterday. So after I made this whole deal, my buddy Jason's gonna buy our backhoe from us, then we're gonna take that, and we're gonna go buy a new disc, uh, and then turn our uh, David Cohen uh, uh, ring roller into, we're gonna make it to where we can hook it up to our disc, our new disc and a ripper. So I got this whole deal made. Manuel walks up to me yesterday, and he says, oh, that new backhoe? the used one yeah that motor's no good we need to get rid of it now and I've got this sinking feeling in my gut like I just promised we were gonna buy a new we were gonna sell our backhoe and then buy a new disc and what that really for the salesman the buddy I'm selling the backhoe to he had already promised to buy the same exact backhoe from the salesman so then I go to the salesman and say sorry um, but we buy a ton of equipment four fence from him a brand new laser bucket last year uh, three new balers last year we get our rakes from him I've got a tether uh, I've got a lot of equipment for that guy so I shouldn't feel too guilty but I still feel guilty right so I told him hey look good news bad news what right bad news I'm selling Jason you're losing a sale good news I'm gonna buy that disc that's been sitting on your lot for three years it's a Suico so, um, <laughs> Sorry, that's how you guys must feel when I talk too much. Anyways, we're gonna we'll grow this. Oh, get the dog to 
We're gonna grow this sedan up big, and then we're just gonna disc it in. It'll be cool. We'll get to do it with the new disc. So that'll be a couple weeks away. So we're running a Great Plains. Great Plains is the brand, but it's called a uh, a drill, which has nothing to do with drills. Uh, it actually has two mm, blades, uh, discs, or like like plates that they're not side by side directly. They have a pitch, and at the pitch they meet together. Where they meet, they actually slice into the dirt, and and the 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 planter has has an auger that's spinning around or a gear that's dropping seed. And right when that disc is slicing, that's when the seed is falling down in there. Well, it's falling down in there, but the, where it slices, the seed then falls into the dirt. And right behind that, there's some rollers that roll it. Come here, Henry. Hey, we're gonna ride with him. Come here. Uh-oh, he jumped in the... Come on. Hurry fast, quick. Here, hold my hand. Ready. Ugh. So here's what I was just talking about. These discs come together and they slice. And the seed is dropping down through these tubes, tubes, and then this roller pushes the dirt back over it. Watch your head. There you go. It's a free big tractors. What's kind of tricky with our GPS, every single border, he has to, so he makes one additional AB line, or one um, starting AB line. But then every time he changes from one border to the other, so the, the area that's being irrigated, he has to reset. He doesn't remake that AB line, but he has to reset that AB line because now there's, uh, he's moved, he's changed. Because of the border, he's about three foot off, uh, two and a half, three foot off. So, yeah, the, the GPS is great. Oh, he's not even using GPS right now. No GPS? No. Yeah, he's not even using it. Look at this guy. Um, sometimes it's just a pain to do it all the time and these borders are pretty narrow so he'll just run it without it, doesn't need it. So, um, yeah, anyways, the GPS can, if you're in real big borders, uh, you can do it every time. Ah, see this is rough from the gophers. We get pocket gophers real bad. Having borders can be, you can see all the turns he has to make, especially on a smaller field. They're not always super efficient when running equipment, but uh, for irrigating, we have to run borders or you couldn't farm. Back at the tarp spots. So I finished this one up. It doesn't look very big and it's not very big compared to these barns. It's only 50 foot wide versus 100 foot wide, 50 foot wide, but they're the same length. The same length as a barn. I'm going to, man, this teff market has just fallen. I just got the phone with the guy that grows a lot of teff. He hasn't sold a single bale, so I'm just gonna tarp this. I might even double tarp it, because I don't want any water to get in this expensive stuff. Watering it down to pack it down. Manuel just got back in the fence. Drew's over here making sure drivers are, you can put more dirt here? Yeah, we're gonna put four more passes here for Manuel to. Oh, okay. I'm putting the water down. Look at there's Henry playing in the laser tower. <laughs> and Will's probably getting mad because that's a, him climbing and that's affecting the tower. So this tower, we use this machine a lot, getting the fields ready for la uh, for irrigation. So this sends out a laser beam with some pitch on it. Hey, you gotta climb down, you're gonna mess up Manuel, come here. Oh, you're all right right now, you're fine. Those receivers on that bucket are, are catching the, the geometry or the pitch that that transmitter is sending out. And so then that tells that bucket what to do. Our old style had one single receiver in the middle. This is this will be the second year on this setup. It's got one on either edge. As, as you would turn, it would, it would angle up because that trend, the receiver was dead center. And so the, the middle wouldn't be off, but the edges would be off. So we went to this dual system to where all the way across, it's flat the entire time. And we really like it so far. Again, it's only our second year. It's hard to say if it's paying for itself, but it's a wider bucket. It's two foot wider. 
uh, it's a lighter bucket and we went to that more narrow or that uh, smaller tractor so he can turn tighter turns pulling a, a lighter bucket pulling less dirt but covering more acres uh, faster so more efficient setup very expensive setup Are you ready for the news? <laughs> Several videos ago, I went and looked at some hay. We ended up buying a bunch of it. It was all rained on. Very nice, fine stem, very leafy, pretty hay, just no color to it. Oh, this would have been awesome hay if it was green. Anyways, paid about $17.50 to $18.50 delivered, just depending on some of it was rougher than the other stuff. Uh, I think we're going to start it off at 1350. Uh, 15, 13, uh, 1450, 1550, 1650, 1750. So about five, five dollar. Well, then it cost me a dollar a bale. So a six dollar loss on 30,000 bales. <laughs> oh, 30,000 times six. $180,000, wow. <laughs> oh, I do lose sleep at night because of this stuff, but whatever. All right, John's at getting lunch. Start his truck up real quick. This is, I just unloaded this with the big bales. He's grabbing lunch. All right, well, I guess it's the end of the day. Drew, Drew's in the office. What do we have to do tomorrow, Drew? I don't know, I'm off. Oh, tomorrow's Saturday, you're off. Dang. Dang. I don't think I'm gonna drive down. I was thinking about driving to Yuma in, in the squeeze, but, but, okay, big news, big news. I didn't tell you guys anything. I didn't want to get anyone excited. I have a new employee. This employee does not know how to drive trucks. This employee doesn't know how to drive a semi or a squeeze. This employee doesn't know how to drive a tractor. This employee doesn't know anything about making hay. <laughs> if I put this employee out in the field with all the required equipment, nothing would get done. This employee is my sister. Hey, kids. I kind of think Drew should be in charge of teaching Mackenzie how to drive a 10 speed. You have to know all facets of the business, okay? All of I them. Drove, um, I drove the forklift the other day. Pablo saw me. Was he running? Yeah. She drove a true. forklift. It was, it's a little, it was like it's a little, a, um, little 6,000 pound forklift. Video game. <laughs> Anyways, Mackenzie's here to help help in the office help keep my mind sane uh help track things help uh streamline. streamline i am not very good at tracking things um receipts get thrown away immediately uh i'm just not very well put together so pretty decent at driving a squeeze still a novice or yeah novice at driving a semi meaning I'm, i suck at it grind a lot of gears miss gears sometimes i forget pull up to a stop sign i'm still in high and i'm like why isn't this working thought i was in first but really i'm in what would that be fifth six i'm in six why isn't this going well if i forgot to go back to low gear so there i am in sixth instead of first needless to say i need help and other things lisa's got a lot we're trying to expand the office so she's got a lot on her hands so we thought what better way to spread the stress then force force family members to come back and work here 
That's why McKinsey's here. Right, Kins? That's right. What do, you, what do you say so far? How long have you been here? Uh, since June 1st. Some Drew, how are you feeling about the trucking season so far? You're doing great. Everything is going very well. It's been a very different year than last from last year, hasn't it? Now, we were running all over the place trying to find hay this year. It kind of found us. It's all been, yeah. It, we haven't had to go that far. Remember, we were in Harquahela a lot. You, we, were in we went to Yuma. Yuma. Where else? Uh, gosh dang. Uh, Hyder quite a bit. Uh, Matt stuff. Aguila. Aguila. We were all over the place. There was such a shortage on hay last year. And this year, that is not the problem. So, I don't know. The trucks have had a little bit easier to go, I would say. We got a new driver. We got a new driver, Jose. He's great. Jose's doing great, along with Gonzalo. Jose and Gonzalo are doing longer trips. And John. Keeping, letting Drew's able to focus more on the trucks rather than drive the trucks, which is good. Yeah, as much. So it's been a good year, it's real been good year. Productive year. I'm not quite ready to buy more trucks. Are you? Let's go another year. Well, <laughs> I'm all right with upgrading trucks. I just don't think we need more. Not to necessarily expand. Because no. what we've got five running right now. And a six one with a motor, out of it. Out of it. Is that right? Technically. Yeah, there's five. There. So we own six. We're running five. One of them is always a. It's more like a backup. Sometimes we'll run all five. But um, anyways, and we got the the blue truck from PDI. PDI. We don't. It's not. We try to keep it out of the field. So when Drew's home, he'll park blue, and then uh, which he's home a lot now with those other guys driving more. But he'll jump in that spare truck, and we'll let it get beat up. We won't beat up blue. Plus we yeah. bought that other that long nose we bought this year. So yeah, we bought. Oh, long, have long you guys balls. seen the long nose? That's I don't know that I showed you guys the new truck we got. I don't think you did. Sold the truck, bought another truck. Tell everyone what it is. Two thousand six oh. Peterbilt three seventy nine, uh, long hood. So C fifteen. C fifteen. But 18 not the, speed. Not the six NZ. Not the six NZ like like blue the the PDI truck. And Same then it's order. got. It's just a day cab. It's not a sleeper truck. It's a real good looking truck. We gave that one to Gonzalo because he's a very good driver. Kept his truck immaculate. Even Jose keeps his truck immaculate. I had a guy call me up with the truck for sale today. I'm like, ooh, that could be a nice truck to put Jose in. But Jose's truck's pretty badass. It's a nice truck. I don't know. But he might not want to get out of that truck to go to that one with the sleeper. Uh, he probably would. He probably would? Go to get him, putting him with an 18 speed, he'd probably love it. That's a 13 speed, I thought. Is it, thir is it 13? I think it's 13 speed. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, all right, we're getting long winded, you guys. Thanks for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed it. We got a lot done today. Henry had a good day. Got to hang out with Grandpa, uh, Papa, and Nana after that. And you guys got to, oh, he hung out with McKinsey. You guys, now McKinsey's here. Surprise. Uh, I don't know. I think she needs to learn how to drive a truck. That might be a wintertime deal. I think that'd be pretty sweet to have her done. All right, we need an extra driver. The spare truck is Get in. McKinsey's. Get in there. It needs to be washed, by the way. It'll make some... He just washed it. He'll, it'll make some great, great uh, video Our for you Turo guys. Arturo wants to teach me how to run the road cider. He Ar said it's a little bit hard. Arturo <laughs> wants to... Well, it's... Yeah, I mean, a lot of teenagers learn how to do it, so she'll it's get exactly. it. It's a little bit hard. <laughs> little bit hard. Awesome. Thanks for watching the show. You guys know what to do. Like, uh, share, subscribe, comment. Um, let's see. I asked, you guys told me what you did a while back. What do you drive? Do we have pickup trucks, cars, what brand? So Ford, nice. Dodge, Chevy, uh, Nissan, Tuda, uh, VW. I'm just pronouncing these other cars. Yeah, Nissan, Nissan. All right, we'll see you guys.